Big O, showtime! Uh, again, for a second time. Greetings, that'd be all new is I, Dark77, with another, uh, you, another fan fiction review. Uh, as always, links to the stories in the description. Please like, comment, please respect this is my opinion. Um, yada, yada, yada. So, the story we're going to review is called Act 28 Scapegoat. It's by Galaxy 1. 1001D. It's the same person who did Roger the Vigilante. This is this is in essence episode two of his season three. And personally, from the stories I read um, of his stories so far, from the Big O stories, which is Act twenty seven to thirty two, because I haven't got a chance to read the rest of them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. I don't really like, I find this one the weakest story. Not so much is it, is it a bad story, it's so much though I like the other, I like the other ones better. It's pretty much, it's pretty much just that. It's like, no, this, this, it's still a good story, I just like the other ones better. Sorry, throat, swe throat swelling. I hate having to take, have to do all these reviews in one take. Uh, well, that's the nature of, uh, I don't know how to edit and stuff like that, but, uh, so, in terms of plot, the plot takes one, uh, a couple weeks after Act of Roger the Vigilante. Um, the pair, there are riots going on in Paradigm, Paradigm City. <clears throat> um, everyone's kind of boarding themselves up. Um, they, all the people realize that, oh, Alex Rosewater kind of betrayed everyone. Wants to be a god? Okay, let's, let's destroy the company. Roger's, uh, Roger is preparing for, like, worst case scenario, sealing his house off. And... What happens next? Sorry, I hit the throat. Occupying most of my time. I don't have I don't have use next either. Um, Roger is asked by the Paradigm City Corporation, the executives, the people under Alex, to basically save them. And he's like, mm, maybe for a million dollars. I don't. I actually it doesn't show how much money they're giving him. <sighs> Sorry. Um, and, and he goes through kind of an ex exponent exponential crisis over all the memories he has, which I get. Which, from what I've seen so far, from the stories I read, it seems to be like a recurring theme, like all the memories and all the nightmares and all the visions. And I thought, okay, carry on. Uh, carrying on what happened in the actual show. Nah, okay, good enough. And then Ale and then Alex comes back with Big Fu, Big Fow, and they have one final showdown before uh, before not Big O destroys it. Captain Dead. I'll explain it a little bit. Uh, what I like about this plot is due to the fact it does solve the it, the Big Fow. I mean, there's still a kind of there still was kind of that plot hole with Gordon, well, not Gordon, Alex still hooked up to the machine. So I'm thinking, okay, well, he's still technically hooked up to the machine. He's still technically a Megadeus following on from uh, Roger and Beck's conversation from Roger the Vigilante. And hear him say, oh, well, he's, he's no longer a Met, he's no longer fit to be a Dominus. At the end, kind of was a nice touch, and uh, and having Dorothy be afraid of Big Foul for what happened in the show. Okay, that's a, that's another nice touch. Again, the plot is good enough to fit in the theme of the story. I personally just like the other stories. I just like the other stories more. Character development. Again, it's just like in Roger the Vigilante. I know I'm going to be making a lot of references to that one, <laughs> to uh, Act 
27. Um, it's still... <sighs> Darn, if I, if I knew how to edit, I would get rid of the arms. Uh, it still carries over the theme of, of keeping the characters true to what they acted like in the anime. It's still... You still had Dorothy still acting like, oh, she's a complete another douche. I, I absolutely love one scene where she's kind of contact where the Paradigm Corporation was co trying to contact uh, Roger, and Dorothy takes on the phone and said, what do you think he does? And she lists off what Roger does throughout the entire day. He, he wakes up until noon. He sleeps until noon. Then he br And then he walks around, checking for uh, what to be repaired, and then he broods, and then he eats. Didn't come at one. There's one, two more. No. <laughs> um, it was kind. Of, it was kind of a funny moment. It's like it's, and they still keep true to themselves. Um, I like the new characters. I can't remember if like Erskine and and all the other executives appear in the show. I can't remember because it's been so long since I've seen the show, so I can't. I can't remember every single character. Um, at least I think Erskine appeared once. I'm not hundred percent. Sure. Uh, but again, just it's good enough that it, you could see them make an episode on this. Yeah, they can, yeah they can easily make an episode on this if they wanted to. They could be like Samurai Jack. So, oh, we're bringing back Big O. Yay! Yay! You know, finish finish the show, just like they did Jack. Uh, Jack. Grammar. Um, I saw like two grammar errors. One was, I think, in Chapter 6, and I think one um, was in, I can't remember where the other, I can't remember where the second error was. I, I did see the, I did see a second error, but I know in, in Chapter 6 there is an error. He missed the word. Sorry about that. Um, getting my thoughts collected. Uh, pacing and imagery. The imagery is again immaculate. It does it's enough to show, but not enough to completely show because that's what Big O was, was all about. It was all about oh, you only see like the veneer, the facade, but you have but you have to read between the lines to understand everything that really is going on. And that's what I like about his story. I like the fact that he still keeps the general idea of big of Big O, show more than tell, and always leave questions unanswered, so that way you know you can easily go whatever you, however you want, however you want. And I also like the more narr the and a bit. What I thought is a nice touch is compare the his stories compared to a lot of Big O fan fictions I read is. He keeps like a solid narrative. Big O is was known for like an open open and shot. So you can literally start at one episode. You can like go choose which episodes you want if you uh, if you wanted to. And they're close enough that that you you don't have to join up. But towards the end of the show, they started going like a a tiny narrative with the construction of Big. Big Bow and Alex Warswater starting up his new world. And I like the fact he's keeping that small narrative and slowly widening it to and switching and then I think starting next chapter he he switches from the Big Bow thing since that's probably because he's destroyed to uh, Dorothy and uh, Roger's rela uh, relationship. And I like that subtle switch. And the growth of the characters they all they're all solid. They're all meaningful. I know I'm going back to character development, but uh, uh, pacing again. It's paced well enough that you can easily see it as a big episode. It's not too long, but it's not too short. It's literally just for. I wouldn't really change how long it is or how short it is. I wouldn't make it longer. I wouldn't make it shorter. It's really just paced. Personally, I would get rid of that whole scene where they at the bar. And the guy barges in. If only because that's like really kind of out of place. Like a big like a big lipped alligator moment. 
to quote TV tropes, but eh, it's not, it's literally just not really a big, that's really, like, you don't, that's not going to impact the story, it's not like, oh, it's just a stupid thing, it's just, it's just, okay, okay, it's like, okay, <laughs> uh, finally, connection to genre and emotional investment, uh, suspension adventure, it did, well, I think that all the, all, all the story chapters or acts are suspension adventure, I think, except one, maybe, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't looked at the genres, uh, it is suspenseful with the whole fight, in, with the whole fight and Roger getting mind skipped into an asylum, I thought that was really suspenseful, or the fact that it's like, well, Big Foul might actually, well, he's not gonna destroy Big O, but he might do some damage, despite the fact half, almost half, a third of his body is missing, but, you know, and Colonel Datsun being the one to destroy Big Fowl was a, was a nice touch in the in the grand scope of the plot. Emotional investment, I love Big O, so I was like, and it's really getting to me how well he's writing Roger Smith. That's probably the biggest reason why I get emotionally invested in these stories. The writing of Ro and specifically the characterization of Dorothy and Roger is sublime. It is amazing, and I, it's like it. It honestly makes me feel like again. I think I referenced this in Roger Spencer. It literally makes me feel like I'm watching the show, and I can't really go into India because I really love the show. Granted, I like Monster Musumi now because of Sue. She's so adorable. She's so cute. I want to hug her if she would be. Um, yes, I know. I like the show. Meh. Um, would I recommend it? Uh, just like Roger the Vinch Lanty, if you're a fan of the show, I would recommend it. If you're not a fan of the show, get in. I mean, I would recommend the show. I mean, I love the show. I love the show. As far as this story, um, I would, but I would honestly suggest for this story and for Roger the for this story specifically, I would recommend watching at least the series finale of the anime before watching it, before reading this episode, so you know like half the stuff that happened, because they literally call do a bunch of callbacks to the episode. But other than that, I I would honestly recommend it. So the only hard part I had to figure out was my favorite part, mainly because it was a solid of story that really nothing stood out to me. I mean, I'm dead serious. Nothing really stood out to me as, like, something of an amazing scene. So, I can't... I can't say a favorite part. I re honestly can't. And it's not so much the story is bad. It's just the fact there is no moment that just stood out for me, personally. I know some people would probably, like, uh, like, that's on being the one to destroy Big Bell again. That was a nice touch. So, it's like... But it doesn't... It didn't really stand out for me. But nothing... Again, no, uh, but I I do like the story. I do like how it's just a solid addition to the series. Again, not it not as good as the other stories of his I read, but good enough that it's a good story. So, what are your thoughts? Um, please again subscribe into the com and or at least just tell me what you think in the comments. And who knows, I may well, I'm gonna have to do the rest of the series. Uh, uh, sooner or later, so I might as well get started on because I'm mainly because I'm reading a Mario story and it's not done yet. I'm waiting for the last chapter. I think. I don't know how long it is. So, uh, in the words, lost my train of thought for a second there. 